Brown and I work at Geisinger. Um, we're a large healthcare system in Pennsylvania and I'm the Associate Vice President of Learning Organization Development there at the system. We're a little bit different um, from what I'm noticing and talking to other professionals because we don't just have a focus on the learning and development aspect. So we really are the organizational development and learning team. It, it's everything that my team has been talking about where we want to go and we've been working on that, but it was able to pull all of our thoughts together in a model that we can actually follow. I thought it was really important that we're all speaking the same language. So if I throw out terms like learning cluster or personas, we would all know what we're talking about and what we're trying to drive towards. So in addition to the team that attended your intro, we also got each one of them the book. So that way, again, they have the reference material, they could all go through it together and then come together as one team versus I didn't want um, someone who is really creative in the instruction, instructional design area, not being able to follow the learning and development specialist as they're trying to share what their vision was. So again, I thought it was really important for the whole team to really understand where we're trying to go together with learning. I didn't want us to just kind of go through a book because maybe that's not the best way they learn, but also it could have taken a lot more time because I feel like we would have each had to get back together, review the section. And then if we had questions, we didn't really have an expert in the group. We, we I think we would be continually asking questions, but maybe get off the rails a little. So when I saw your intro training, I thought this is perfect because it can really be a quick course to get us. Um, I was hoping that it really followed the model of the book and the feedback I got that it really did. So I, I, that's what my intent was for sending them to the intro course. I had one team member say she walked away from it really seeing how she can use this when one of the HR business partners contacts her and says, we have an institute with this problem. What content do you have or do you have a program? And she said, you know, her first reaction before would be to try to go into the archives or see what we have. And she said, this really made me think about if we do find that there's a systemic issue or something that we need to have learning around, how do we slow down and actually create what we need for those, those personas and the business? That's one aspect where she's not necessarily creating programs every day, but she's able to use it in response to the requests. And we're so excited to just really dive in and then talk about the details and walk through how you can actually use it. And so that's when they were coming back with these aha moments where during the course, they were thinking of the work that they do on a daily basis and thinking about, oh, we can use it here, or, oh, we just thought about this program that we're about to create. Do we stop? Do we back up? And um, the other thing I do want to point out that came up is it was a really good reminder for the team, and they brought it up yesterday when we debriefed about it. We don't have to throw away everything that we had. I would say because this is just on the forefront of the future of learning, in my opinion. We know, we have learned, I hope, through the last few years that the old traditional ways of reacting and providing what I would call programs, they're just not effective. And so if we, actually, if we want to see the impact and we want to see the behavior changes, and we talk about in the flow of work, well, how do you do that if you're not using some type of different model? Um, you know, dusting off a PowerPoint and trying to take what you used to have for four hours and making it two hours, that's not the solution all of the time. Pulling them away from their, their unit or their location to sit somewhere for four hours and then expecting them to take it back and teach it, that's not practical. And that's not the way adults learn anyway. So I definitely would recommend if anybody was considering, you know, really sitting back and, look, and looking and saying, well, what do our learning opportunities look like? I think this really, again, helps. Are we aligned with the business? Are we teaching the right things and educating on the right things? And do we have the right audience? I would say send one or two people if that's, I mean, if that's all you can do, 
get creative with the materials that you have and at least get some a few people exposed to the introduction course because otherwise I do feel like you mentioned earlier you know how do you sustain it are you afraid it's just going to go away sometimes if you move too slow you can quickly start canceling the meeting because you have too many other things going on where again the intro course I honestly felt that it was it was not that big of an investment, in my opinion, compared to the outcomes that you can get from it. But it also helps accelerate that. And, and then you want to use that investment to move things forward in your organization. I would, I guess my, my advice would be if they're not sure, they're not familiar with the model, to start somewhere. Get the book, join you know, the free community and start the conversations and, and even reach out to other people and ask, well, how's it going? How are you using it? Because instead of spinning your wheels and wondering how might learning and development look different at my organization, it, just take a look at other models and see what people are doing with it and then make a decision if it's right for, for you or you know, if your organization's already there, that's great. 